this is yours truly, Dr. Charles and Devon here, and I am glad. Good morning, Corrine. Good morning, Olamide and Frida. I'm so glad you joined me this morning. It is a great day to be alive. Um, the God that we serve is amazing indeed, and I'm so excited to come to you today and share something amazing with you. God bless you. I hope you can hear me just fine. The audio and everything is fine. We want to make sure that everything is fine. So I hope you can all get a bit of that worship going. And um, we are going to have a great time today. I hope you can follow me. Amazing. It has been a while indeed. Welcome, welcome. Yolanda, God bless you. I am so glad you're joining me this morning for another Daily Boost. Reception is good. Okay, is it perception or reception? Okay, Corrine. I hope you had a great trip traveling all over Switzerland. So, I am excited, uh, Tanya, for joining me today. God bless you. I'm excited. I know that it's going to be a great, great morning. So, I'm looking forward to, to another great day today. Hello, hello, hello. I love all of you. Our Morgan from Jamaica. God bless you. We love you very much. I'm, I'm glad you're joining me and we are going to have an exciting time today because I'll be talking to you about creating your world and the emphasis will be instructing or framing your world. So it is going to be another exciting morning. Hello Maria, love you. I'm so glad you've joined me today. Praise God, praise God. Uh, I love that. I like the response. So we are going to have a great time this morning. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be punchy. We're going to have a lot of good things happening. And I know I'll be teaching on framing your world. And this is a great music from uh, my wonderful brother, uh, uh, Brother Oyikan. Wonderful. Don't sin Oyikan. Great, great, great uh, worship leader. I love that. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> oh, you're precious. Olamidega. God bless you. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. So I'm looking forward to today. It is going to be a great day. Alexander, I'm glad you joined me this morning. So we wait for a few people to join us. It is going to be great. And I'm going to give you a quick recap of what, of what we uh, talked about um, on Friday a little bit. So that you have a better understanding of why I'm teaching this series. You understand that the world, the world you're living in, if you need a brand new world, you can have a brand new world. So... So I'm going to start teaching and I'm going to go straight and share with you some of the thoughts that came in from, um, from um, um, Friday. That way you can be up to speed with us. I, I was talking on Friday about developing processes. I talked about on Thursday about creating systems that everything in the world. Hello, Barate. God bless you. I believe... Uh, but I, I hope I pronounced it correctly. God bless you. You know, I've been talking about creating system that God created everything, that we need a brand new world. To have a brand new world, we have to have brand new people. Hello, heavenly. How are you? Bless you, bless you, bless you. Yes, and I'm excited. We've been talking about creating a brand new world. And um, this morning, as I was getting ready, and the Holy Ghost began to speak to me about some things. And one of the things he spoke to me was this. He said, um, these are all scientific processes and uh, what we call science is simply discoveries of what God has already created. What we call science, science is the discovery of God's processes. So you can write that down. Hello Pastor Dana is on. Remember D. And I have Ashley Smith. God bless you. Now hear this. What we call science, medical science, whatever scientific thing, is simply an adventure or a discovery into what God, what processes God has already put in place. You see, people are discovering the solar systems. It's called system for a reason. And we talk about the, the skeletal system. We talk about system. The world is made up of systems. We have different systems. We have economic system. We have different kinds of system. And then they are 
processes that run the systems. Hello, Lucille from Canada. God bless you. Annette, God bless you. Now, we're talking about creating systems, and everything around us is a system, economic system, uh, academic system. So we have lots of systems. We have the systems of the world, but also we have the system of God. We have a God system, and in God's system, it's totally different. Now, in the church, we don't know that it is like that. A lot of churches don't realize that God created things like that. So we have the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God. Those are two different systems in operation. But each of those systems have subsystems that actually um, help run the processes. So you have the kingdom of the world, you have the world's economy, you have the world's, um, world's educational system, you have the governmental system. So these are all subsystems um, underneath a bigger system. So we understand the different systems are always colliding or clashing because each system is based on a different set of ideology or ideas. You have God's idea, you have the world's ideas. So ideas rule the world. So whatever ideas, if we can turn down the volume on this a little bit. Ideas rule the world. If we, if we, can, if we can understand what ideas we're running with, it would change how we do things. It would change totally how we're doing things. But I want you to understand that we are going to be having a great time today. And uh, I know that everything is going to be working just fine. Okay? Science is the adventure or the discoveries of God's processes. So what scientists do, for example, if you know that there is, there is an eye, there is somebody, that behind every design is a designer. So a real scientist, good science will draw you closer to God. If you're an honest scientist, you cannot say, no, it, it, never in science can, can order come out of chaos. It never works that way until somebody creates the order. Order never comes out of a big bang or explosions. They can never be ordered out of explosions. After explosion, something must create that thing in order because order requires a design. Order requires a design. And if there is a design, there's got to be a designer. There's got, if there's a creation, there's got to be a creator. So God has called us to share with him, to share his nature, his life, his creative abilities to create a brand new world. So if you don't like the world you're living in, if you don't like the way things are going, you can create a brand new world. You see, disorder never creates order. You see, but order can be created, can be created out of disorder. Hello, Pastor Jean Masiko. I am so glad you've joined me this morning. We love you, my love to Joel and to everybody there. So when we are talking about a design, there must be a designer. So you cannot have chaos. We're talking about creating a brand new world. You cannot have a design without a designer. So the world that we're living in did not come out of chaos. No, it started with chaos, but ended and ended up with a design by some designer and that designer is called a creator and his name is our uh, the Lord God Almighty our Father hallelujah he is the source of all things he has given us his spirit so that we can become like he is so look at the eyeball I don't think an eyeball as intricate as the design is can come out of chaos so we talk about evolutionary theories and things like that. Remember, it's just a theory. So I'm not trying to get into um, uh, the, the science and the art of evolution. That's what I'm talking about today. I'm simply telling you, if we are going to create a brand new world, we have to have a brand new spirit, a brand new spirit to a brand new life, a brand new life to a brand new mindset, to a brand new people, and then to a brand new world. So we have to go through the process. Now, what we call science today, science is simply man's discovery of God's processes. Every true scientist is drawn closer to God. Like Albert Einstein knew that it had to be God. At the end of his years, at the end of a lot of scientists' years, they always come to the conclusion that there is a designer to everything. Chaos, 
cannot create order. But out of chaos, order can be created. Now, pay attention to what I'm saying. It is very important. Hello, Emmanuel Adimora. Welcome on board. So, chaos cannot create disorder. In, uh, chaos cannot create order. And then order cannot create, you know, order cannot create chaos. Now, hear this. But chaos, order can be created out of chaos there's a gap there and that gap is filled by a creator but by, by a designer and that's where we can come in when God comes in and he comes and creates out of disorder he created a brand new world so now we're looking at some scriptures I want to I want to read something this morning like I said the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and said to me I want you to pay attention to to this scripture here in 2nd Peter chapter 3 This is what the, the Word of God declares. It says, um, verse 13. Pay attention to this. It says, nevertheless, we, nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, plural, uh, singular, a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness, or in other words, wherein people can believe when you believe that's counted as righteousness so in all the words God is looking for a world that is full an earth that is full of where people have faith and believe in what he has said that's the kind of world we want to live in when there's no sickness or and no disease so that is I, I, I love that I love the scriptures talking about a brand new a new earth a new earth created for the righteous to live in and created by the righteous with their father so we can create a brand new world. So all through last week, I have been talking about creating a brand new world. Creating a brand new world. I want to make sure that everything is going very well. How are we doing? Um, so now, we create, I, I've mentioned to you that science, true science, always draws you closer to God. If you're a scientist, one of the reasons I got saved was because when I saw what God, uh, when I saw what was happening around me, I knew that God had to be real. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 20, it says the invisible things of God are made known in the things that are visible. So that man is without excuse. In other words, man has no excuse not to believe God because when you look around nature, you see the designs of nature, you see the variety of nature, you know that there's a designer behind the design. Nothing just happened by accident. There has to be an intent behind something that happens. What we consider accidental is sometimes intentional by somebody, but because we are unprepared for it, we call it an accident. That's what life is. I have said to my people many times, I don't believe in accident. I don't believe in accidents. There are no accidents. They're just negligent, uh, ne negligence by people. When somebody doesn't fix their brakes, in fact, there's an intent that I don't want to fix my brakes. You know the result of not fixing your brakes. You go down a hill, you won't be able to stop, and you're going to end up stopped by something else. So I don't call that an accident. I call it negligence. So if you know what to do and you don't do it, that's a different, uh, different thing. If you know you're supposed to check your engine and you don't check it, that's negligence. So you're being, ne you're being negligent of your responsibility. So now let's move on beyond that. I'm just setting the basis for which you can understand me this morning. I'm talking about we have come to the place where we are creating new, we are creating new systems and we are developing new processes. You see, when God sets a system, there has to be a process. There has to be a process for that system to operate. So, what the processes are is what will this thing do? What will this system do? What will the system do? So, if you're going to create a brand new world, you've got to know what system you're trying to create. You create a system, then you set the processes in, in play. The processes are actually the flow of how things ought to operate so i'll be talking today about the next logical step after the process has been set into place what gives it the authority and the uh, uh, audacity to run this process 
Who has the power to run it? What, what do you need to do to turn on the switch? Who is in charge of the place? Who can handle this? So when the process is set, you will have to still have your boundaries, but also you've got to frame it or frame the world you're creating. I hope you're following me. Okay, so now you, you, I, I know you're on board with this. So I want to share one or two other, other things with you before I continue for you to have a better understanding of what I'm talking about today. We are creating a brand new, a brand new world today. I hope you're enjoying this. In Psalms 104 verse 30, the Bible says, Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. You have renewed the face of the earth. I want you to let me know you're catching on. Put some of those scriptures up so that I know you're, you're, you're flowing with me. He said, you have renewed the face of the earth. We can renew the face of the earth. Isaiah 65 verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, not come into mind. In other words, the Bible is telling us to create, to create. God wants us to create. We are made to create. Hello, hello, Frank. Prophet Frank, a happy birthday to you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. I can't wait to see you in New York this week. We are going to be in Jamaica, New York, not, not uh, Kingston, Jamaica. We are looking forward to coming this weekend with mighty, mighty miracles. The meetings have already started in New York. And by the way, for those of you that are watching me, we had a couple that came all the way from Texas. Thank you. We had a couple that came all the way from Texas, 2,500 miles away for the service yesterday. And uh, the, the, when, they, when they came, a, a man and a woman, they came in there. This woman has had sclerodema, a condition that is incurable. A condition where your body, your organs, kind of seizes up and stiffens up. Thank you for putting the address. Thank you. Jamaica, New York. 150-04 Liberty Avenue in Jamaica, New York. So that's where the meetings are going to be this weekend. It's going to be explosive. Hello, Sabina. How are you? Thank you very much for the address. Now, here this. This lady came, and uh, while I was teaching about intentional action or intentionality, the power of intentional action, and I just turned to her and I just said, I just looked at her. So you came to get healed, right? She said, yes. 2,500 miles to come and get healed in one service. Can you understand what happened? She had scleroderma. Scleroderma is a condition that's incurable. Sometimes they call it the Medusa disease. Or, you know, Medusa in the Greek mythology where, you know, they, they'll take the face of Medusa and then you, you, you become a stone. You become a stone. Just the same thing like what happens, what happened to uh, Lot's wife when she turned back and she became a, a stone. That's the same thing that this scleroderma is supposed to do to people. The moment it comes on your body, your, your hands stiffen, your back stiffen, you can't move, your jaw stiffens, your internal organs begin to get hard. And before you know it, you can't move, you can't breathe, and then normally they die. So this lady came yesterday, I just looked at her. I just spoke a word. I just said, your condition is gone. So your scleroderma is gone. I've never met them in my life. Instantaneously, her body began, began to get soft. It was wonderful. I know maybe she's watching us today, but I just want to say thank God she came. Uh, and the, the gentleman that came also, God touched his heart. I mean, he was going through a tough time last four years. God touched his heart. But you see, people have come from a long way just for one miracle. And God never disappoints. God never disappoints. So I am very sure about the power of intentional action. That means intentionality. I am intent on creating a brand new world. So let me move on with this today because I want to share this with you so that you can understand where I'm coming from. And I stated on Friday, I'm going to run through a few things from Friday. That way you have a better understanding of where we are. I mentioned a few things that will help you. You rule over the world you create. I gave you some points. You delegate who rules the world with you. The next thing is your world responds to your voice. I was stating all of this to help you 
catch get a hold of this your word responds to your voice number four your wo- your words and your breath is the life of your world and i said number five your world your world would last and your rulership of your world will last as long as you have you understand your divinity so now for those that are that are following me now let's get down to business you see when processes are created and they are framed first of all you create a system and then you create the process to run the system but then you have to define the 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 boundaries of that system so if you have a, a thermo a thermodynamic system you see the thing about engineering i think like an engineer a thermodynamic system it's a system enclosed system that system would operate in a certain way until you introduce something externally that can impact that system and change its characteristic and its behavior so for example if the, the system is running on the inside, an engine is running, a car engine is running, and then maybe you, you, water comes into the, uh, into the fuel tank, and then the, the water goes into the engine, all of a sudden the engine is not working because there's no com- combustion, because water mixed with gasoline is not a very good mix. So we, when the ignition comes, nothing happens. So we have to understand how to create the system, and then how to develop the processes and then the next thing we will have to understand how to define or frame and put the rules of engagement or the rules of that world that we create so this is what God did the Bible says and God said let's make man in our image Genesis 126 after he had created all those things and he set the rules in place and he says let us make man and let man have control or dominion over the, all the things we created all the systems created you see God created the systems the processes and then those to run the processes so let them have dominion let's look at Genesis chapter 1 I want to show you something wonderful it says um verse 26 and God says let's make man in our image after our own likeness and let and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping things that creepeth upon the earth verse 27 so God created made man in his image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them that's beautiful now hear that what it says in verse 28 and God blessed them and God said unto them, I want you to pay attention to verse 28. Here God is setting the rules of what is supposed to happen. Now he's putting and framing the world according to the operation. It's like you have the systems built. You understand the process, how each of the subsystems make up the big system in your world. And then you know the process for which all of them communicate. Then you bring the software here God is putting the software into his creation God says okay this is the one that's gonna run the software that will run the process that will run the systems okay I hope you're catching this now catch on to this God created the person in charge the person or the authority in charge of the commands of the uh, of the software are you pay, paying attention to this the software that runs the processes of the different subsystems I don't want to get too technical so that if you're not an engineer you you will not understand me so but I hope everyone can understand me in other words you have in an engine in a car you have the brakes you have the the uh, combustion uh, chamber you have the lights these are different systems connected to make one whole car which is a system by itself so let me use the car as an analogy a car is made up of many many little systems that make up a bigger system called a car so you have the lights connected to through wires the battery and so you have a switch that can turn it on and off okay then you have the the fuel tank that connects to the combustion chamber and then you have a spark plug that can 
can spark that engine when the fuel comes and explosions will take place and it becomes energy that moves the engine forward. You have the tire systems and the braking systems. You have the hydraulic system. All of those things are in the same car making a bigger system. So when you have all of this in place, so you have the, the big system called the car. Then you have the smaller system called the different things that, that are put together. Then you have a process. So you have the gearing system that the, the gear system would also know how to be engaged. So you don't just put the gear into gear. You have to play if you're, if you're driving as a standard, what they call a stick shift. You put your legs on the clutch, press it so that it releases the gear system to exchange from one gear to another. If you're doing automatically, as you go after a certain speed limit, it changes. So those are processes put in place to run the subsystems that will move the whole system. I hope you understand me. I hope you, we, can use the, we can use the car as an example. Now, but they are rules that govern the car. You can't just get into the car and start heating the car to move. You've got to know what the rules are. You've got to turn the key on. There's got to be battery. If you have everything set up and there's no battery, you can't even turn the car on. So all the systems must be in place. So that's when I, you have to frame your world. You have to learn how to frame the world. Because whatever world you have framed, you have the right to run it. You have, then you have the rules in place to control it. If you call something, whatever you call it, you define it. When you define it, you then decide what you're going to do with it. So I hope you're understanding me. So I don't want to talk, use words like system, system, so that you, you get caught up in it. It just simply means things that work. Same thing with the educational system. You have elementary school. You have um, uh, sec uh, the secondary education, which is high school. You have... Um, junior high so these are all little subsystems within the educational system so you have the 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 university or in the university system you have um two-year college you have four-year colleges you have your postgraduate you have your certification courses those are all part of the educational system i hope you can understand that so within that educational system you have the subsystem but then there are rules that tell you how the, the process of coming from elementary school to a PhD, to having a doctorate degree. So these are systems set in place with rules governing how they run. So once those things are framed, people follow those rules. Whatever comes into that system must follow the protocol. I hope you understand me. So everything has a system, has processes, and has a protocol to run it. So today, I want to talk, talk to you about establishing protocol or framing your world. Are you ready? I've spent a lot of time giving you foundation to this so that um, I don't want anyone to, to, to miss it. Hear what it says. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And God, said, God blessed them, number one. Pay attention. God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. Here is the instruction. Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. Hear this. And have dominion. Over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing. Now pay attention. I hope you are following me now. I hope you're following me now because it's important. Notice, and God says, be fruitful. Now, systems are in place. And God says, now, I'm going to give you the command of what this system is supposed to do. Be fruitful. Let this system be a fruitful system. Create multiplication. Multiply, multiply, and replenish or Make it beautiful. Refill it. Replenish it. Make it beautiful again. And subdue it. That means anything that is still out of order, bring it into order. That way it can bring glory to me. Hear this. 
and have dominion. In other words, reign as a king. So God is setting the software into the man that he had created. He's now giving the man the instruction of what he is created to do. Or it's called intentional purpose. God created man and said, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to be in charge. You are in charge. You are the ones... You are the one that would decide how this thing is going to be. God didn't say, I'm going to decide it for you. He said, now, have dominion. You're a king. Where the word of the king is, there is power. We'll talk about that tomorrow so that you have a better understanding. So today we're talking about setting the rules or the parameter or the protocol for which your process will work. I hope you're understanding me. Setting, you're creating a world. What kind of world? Is it a billion dollar world? Is it a world with no sickness? So what do you do? You create the system where there's no sickness. Then the next thing is you create the the processes where you achieve what the system is about. Then you go to the next thing. You're going to create what? You're going to create the protocol for which the system will run. And then tomorrow I'll be talking about you are in charge. That's what I'll be talking about tomorrow. Being in charge of your system. But today, I want to give you a better understanding of how to set the protocol. Let's see how much we can cover today. Are you ready? You are setting the protocol in your world. You're setting the protocol in your world. So in other words, you are saying to your world, world, this is what I want to do. This is what I want this world to do. The Apple world has protocol set in place. This is how we want the Apple to uh, come. Um, computer to work, the iPad to work, the iPhone to work, the iPods to work, they have protocol of how they should work. So there are slight differences between an iPad and uh, an Apple MacBook, slight protocol, but they're basically in the same family of product. So they have some similarities and some slight differences. So you understand that, for example, in a MacBook, you can actually connect all the devices in the in the other one, you, you, I mean, you, don't really, you cannot really connect a lot of devices physically because it has some limitations. So you can't just connect a, um, a, a thumb drive into an, I, an iPad without all the attachments. So I understand how that works. So we have, instru- we, we have to give the instructions, the command and the protocol. See, it is being fruitful and multiplying. So what do you say to your world? World, this is what I want you to do. And when you create it, you have a right to set the rules. Let's go to the scriptures. It says, tomorrow we go to verse 29. Now hear this. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. The Bible says, by faith we believe that the worlds were created or framed by the word of God. The world were framed by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. If you can go there with me, let's check it out. I hope this is helping you guys today. So your world is about to experience something amazing. I love it. I really love it. Are you you with me? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. The Bible says, Through faith we understand that the walls, notice the word there, worlds. Worlds. Hebrews 11 3. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. Or the protocol was set in place in this world, plural. So any kind of world, whether it's the educational world, whether it's the business world, it does, they, they were framed. Let me explain what a frame is. A frame is anything that captures and defines what you are looking through. Thank you, thank you, Godwin. God bless you. Now, I mentioned off the top, I said, science is simply a discovery of God's processes. That's why whenever you hear, we have a scientific breakthrough. It means that science has been able to tap into what we already have. Come on, if some of you catch on to it. You see, a scientific breakthrough is simple. They are breaking through to understanding the processes that God has set in place. But if you come from God, you already know what God has set in place. You understand the power of 
of positive desire. You understand the power of purpose. Everything is intentional. They are cause and effect. They're, those are things that we know from scriptures. So what science is doing is simply trying to discover what process God has put in place. But for you that are born of God, the processes are already yours to know. That's why Jesus said, for you it's given to know the things of the kingdom. You're supposed to know the things of the kingdom. It's yours to know. So what science is trying to do is tap into the kingdom of God. So when they have a breakthrough, they say, a new scientific breakthrough. We just discovered this and this and this is like that. When the Bible talk, talked about worlds, they are still discovering other worlds, other galaxies. God didn't say he made the world worlds. That's what it says. Let's look at the scripture again in Hebrews. By faith, we understand that the worlds, worlds, plural, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen and were not made of the things we do appear. Exactly. There is a dimension that you get into that the things that are seen are made of things that are not here. There's what they call the God matter that people are trying in science to find out. They're trying to find out the God matter. You heard about the the um, the kaleidoscope. Um, I think the uh, I think something in Switzerland. Or so, I forgot the name, but it will come to me. Where they are trying to accelerate into the, uh, the subatomic particle to find out what it is. They're calling it the God matter. I can tell you what the God matter is. It's faith. Is that is tapping into the unseen dimension. That's what it is. So when they're talking about this thing, I just smile. I said, come on, you, you, you are coming from this direction to come to meet with me. That is coming from God's direction. I already got this covered. It's called the evidence of things not seen. It's called faith. Believing in the things that your eyes cannot see, but you know in your spirit it does exist. And you can exactly, Corinne, you understand it. It's called CERN in Geneva. You understand it. I've talked about this before. So this I mean, they're trying to get into what they call the God matter. Why would they call it God matter? Once you get into that, you can travel through time and space. You can go back and find out what happened 2,000 years ago. But we got that covered. We know by the word of God, those dimensions are ours today. We go to the future, we come back to the past. We can travel through time. The Bible says we have tasted of the powers of the world to come. The world to come. But we are tasting of the power now. So we are operating under different rules. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Hello, Rahima. How are you and how are my grandkids doing? I love you. So we are talking about, we are talking about understanding the dimension of creation. So let's come on, let's go ahead and see how we can frame our world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you see, write this down. What I see is what I get. Write that down. Hello, Claudius. Good to see you. It's good to see you, son. Hallelujah. Hear this. What you see, write this down. What you see is what you get. The Bible says, you can write this also, as far as you can see, it's yours. Genesis 13 verse 15 the Bible tells us God said to Abraham in verse 14 and the Lord said to Abraham after the Lord had separated from him lift up now their eyes and look from the place where you are northwards and southward and eastward and westward verse 15 for all the land which you see for you I will give unto your seed forever in other words as far as you can see what can you see somebody saw Dubai the way we see it today and we're just walking into a system or a world created by somebody else what world are you creating today what world are you creating today what you see is what you get number two as far as you can see that's that's yours so God does not set the limits to what you can achieve. In other words, you can set the limit to what you want to achieve. He said, ask anything is a blank check. So in other words, you can see, 
you can see a brand new world. There is a place called Zion, Illinois. It was started by a preacher. He called it Zion, Illinois. Zion. Most places that were started by people with biblical mindset. You see, you have to learn how to create your own brand new world. If you don't like the world you're living in, maybe you need a brand new spirit. Take on the spirit of the creator and then he begins to work with you to create a brand new world. I hope you're catching what I'm saying. I love this. Maria was is talking about, it says, man can make a seed with all the right ingredients. I taught that many years ago. You can make a seed in the lab with all of everything that a regular seed will have. But if you plant that seed in the ground, if you plant that seed in the ground, guess what will happen? It will not grow because there is something missing in the seed you know, made in the lab. is the life that God puts in it. So, how come scientists modify? They can only modify what already has the life of God in it. They cannot create a brand new seed from scratch. They can't go to the lab and put this and put this and put this together. No, they will start with something that has life in it and then modify it. That's how science works. They can't just take the different uh, chemicals, put it together and try to mimic the same thing. No, the difference between a real seed and the, 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 the one made in the lab is the life of God in it. I hope you understand that. Take on the spirit of the creator and something amazing will happen. Now, listen, what you see is what you get. As far as you can see, that's yours to possess. Are you with me? You've got to know, okay, I don't want to live in a world of poverty. I don't want to live in a world of sickness. I don't need to live in a world. You don't have to live in that world. Don't listen to religious rubbish that, oh, well, maybe that's the will of God for you. No, that's rubbish. That's total nonsense. It's never the will of God for you to become helpless and hopeless. Never. God's will is for you to enjoy his very, very best so that you can create a beautiful world like him, like father, like son. That's exactly what I think. I'm my father's son, and I think he really loves me. He likes my thinking, by the way. I like his thinking. His thinking is my thinking. My thinking is his thinking. So we are in sync. That's why I go about creating a brand new world. I like what um, Heavenly says. She wants to create Heaven, Illinois. I like that, sweetie. I'll come and visit Heaven, Illinois. Create it, and we'll be there to support you and see a beautiful city out in the middle of nowhere. I've said to people many years ago, Put me in the desert, I'll build a city that the world will come to see. Maybe sometime I'm going to teach you about the city on a hill that cannot be hid. I'll teach you that so that you can understand you are a city on a hill. There is a city on the inside of you that needs to come out. Don't die with that city in you. Come on. You can bring that city out. It starts with an idea, a thought, something that is exciting. See that brand new city and then have the intentional action. Intentionality, purpose in your heart, I'm going to build that city. When you do that, God will come and work with you. And the Lord was working with them, confirming the words spoken. Confirming the word spoken. God loves to confirm words. Yesterday I, I read from Chronicles where the Bible says the eyes of the Lord goes to and fro. He's looking for anyone that will believe his word and he will show himself strong on their behalf. I like that. I like God's thinking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, I, I, I like to think differently. I like to think differently because I am not made, I'm made of the God, God stuff. I am his workmanship. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10. You are his masterpiece. You are created in Christ Jesus for good works that he ordained. You are created out of Christ. You were created in Christ Jesus. You are made of the God stuff. You are made of the God stuff. Do you know that God is so excited when we think like this? He is so excited. Boy, oh boy. I hope you're enjoying this because I am energized. This week, it's going to be explosive. We will talk about that. I don't want to rush it. I want to take my time and teach you this so that you understand that you are God's masterpiece. You are God's master. You're not ordinary. You're not religious. 
No, you have something better than religion. You have the life of Zoe in you. You have the God life in you. You are of the God class. You have the God way of thinking. You have the mind of Christ. You have the attitude that was in Christ. Wow, what an attitude to serve so that you can lift everybody else around you. That is what I'm talking about today. So when I talk about things like this, people are amazed because they said, but how come you, you sound like that? Aren't you being arrogant? No, I know who I am. I know what I have. I know what I'm about. I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. You ought to know where you, came, you, you come from and you ought to know where you're going also. Are you with me? You are first class. You are first class. There is nobody like you. You are not a cop. You are an original. You are a masterpiece. You say, oh, but you don't understand. I have a lot of mistakes. That's what makes you a masterpiece. A masterpiece is something designed by the creator that's a, that is the master artist. And within that creation, there are some flaws, hidden flaws. So you've got to look beyond the flaws to discover the masterpiece. No masterpiece is perfect. That's what makes it a masterpiece. If you find a masterpiece that is perfect, all the proportions are perfect, it's fraudulent. Because that is the secret of discovering masterpieces. Look beyond the flaws and find out the master's touch in that painting. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Oh boy, I'm getting too excited. See, do you know how amazing you are? When I'm talking to you folks, it might seem like I'm just talking through a camera, but I'm talking to you. There is something amazing that's taking place. Inside of you, a new life is coming. A new world is coming. You're thinking differently. Wow, I'm made for more. I'm made for excellent living. I'm made for incredible lifestyle. I'm not made for limitations. My body is not made to stay sick. I get up today, take a shower, and I'm going to go live again. You see, when you start thinking like that, it changes how you live life. You become, you become intentional in how you do things. So I'm talking about framing your world, setting the protocol in your world. How do you do that? It says, by faith, we believe that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By faith, we believe that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. Listen, what you say is what you get. Write that down. You shall have what you say. Mark 11, 22. Have the God faith. Have faith in God. Verse 23. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be moved and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in your heart. In other words, the picture on the inside is the same as the picture on the outside. In other words, not to doubt. How, how can you not doubt? How can you move a mountain? To, I can move a mountain when I'm up in space. Why? Because I've changed the stratosphere in which I am living. Pay attention. I have changed where I am. You see, it's easy to move a big thing underwater. Why? It has different density. If you go to outer space, the... the, the, the uh, the gravi gravitational uh, pull in space is a lot less. That's why people can bounce in space. Why? You can move mountains. You can move things in space. You can push a big machine in space with a tap. If you go to a place of weightlessness, even when you're flying in an airplane and you go to weightlessness, you float. Water can float in the air. All those things can happen. Now, let's put that in a spiritual perspective. In other words, come to the place where there is no more gravitational pull, weightlessness. In other words, no doubt. No doubt, you will move mountains. Come to the place where there is no doubt. You come to the place where there is no gravitational pull. You've come to escape velocity and you've come into weightlessness. That means zero gravity. Things begin to spin. Now, let's put it in a spiritual, spiritual context. We put it in zero doubt. Mountains are moved. Don't doubt. In other words, come to the place where you have no doubts. Things begin to happen. You can move mountains if you are in space because there is no gravitational, the earth gravitational pull is not there. But guess what? The same thing applies spiritually. You come to the place where there's no doubt, you have just escaped 
the corruption of the world. You've come to another dimension. And your words now can move the mountain. You say to the mountain, be moved. You don't even push the mountain. Your words have enough force when you have come to the place of not doubting. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? You shall not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say shall come to pass. You shall have what you say. The mountain will be moved and cast into that sea. So when you come to the place of faith, you come to the place of believing that what you say will happen. Guess what will happen? The mountains will move. Order will be created and your world will be created. You set the protocol with your words. The Bible says, Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe you have received them. When you speak it, believe it is done, and it is done. Are you, are you hearing me? So, thank you, Heavenly, for breaking the point again. Doubt is it's like gravity pulling you down. When you come to faith, you've just escaped that negative stuff. And now you, you're in the dimension of... Of believing where mountains are moved and worlds are created you setting the protocol with your words what you say is what you get you will say unto the mountain I will say of the Lord I will say so do you know that God never named things and he left that to man to name it whatever you call a thing it becomes that to you see there, is, there are no crises in the kingdom of God. If you call a thing a crisis, you've just given it a tag. It becomes that to you. Somebody calls one thing a crisis. Same thing is called by somebody a great opportunity for business. So it depends on how you name it. What you say is what you get. That's how we frame our world. If I say cancer, it's over. I frame it. That means I have brought cancer under my command. Cancer, it's over for you. Not in my world. You cannot operate in my world. You know what? Cancer's out of my world. Why? I set the protocol in my world with my words. Are you catching on to this? Are you catching on to this? You shall have what you say. See, you are a product of your speech. What? Of course, these are basic things that we are taught about faith. And people want to argue. No, it's, this is how you set protocol in the world you want to live in. So you're creating a new system, but you've got to have a new mindset so that you understand this is how the process is going to work. And this is the protocol that will put those things in place. In other words, I say the word and it is done. You shall have what you say. You shall have what you say. I hope you're learning something today. I hope you're learning something today. Hallelujah. So I'm teaching you this because I know we won't have enough time to cover this. But I'm saying this. What you see, you see, what you see is what you get. As far as you can see, that's how far you can go. Number three, what you say is what you get. Number four, as you believe. That is what will be done. That is what will become your intentional action. I hope you're catching on to this. As you believed, it is done. I'll be coming up with a new book and I'll be putting some of those things down so that you can enjoy it. So I'm just actually reading this from some of, my, my, uh, some of the things I taught many years ago. But I'm putting them together for this particular series about creating a brand new world. I hope you're understanding this. As you have believed it is done. Number one, what you see is what you will get. As far as you can see, number two, is what you would receive. You cannot go beyond what you see. Number three, what you say is what you get. Number four, as you have believed, it is done. As you have believed, it is done. In other words, pay attention to this now. Jesus said to the man, do you believe I can do it? The man said, yes, yes, Lord, yes. He says, as you have believed. In other words, you believe me. What you believe about me, it will be done to you. In other words, when you believe me, you have come inside of me and you have become part of me to create that in your world. Can I say it one more time? 
When you believe, you become a partaker of, of mine. You become a partaker of me, of my nature. And we, we are in koinonia. We are in koinonia, we are in fellowship. And so what you believe concerning me is what you would create in your world. So what I'm creating here, Jesus said, is what is going to be created for you. As you have believed, it is done. If you believe me, I can give you the scripture. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. For we having the same spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. The same spirit of faith as it is written. He believed his word and spoke it. We also believe that same word as you believe it is done. We also do speak. When we speak it, we create it. Are you catching on to this? Are you catching on to this? What you believe, you become a part of. And what you become a part of, you become a co-creator of that in your world. Are you catching on to this? What you believe, you become a part of. And if you become a part of it, you're a partaker of the divine nature. And then you create that in your world. Are you catching on? So I'm talking about setting the protocol. Or setting the rules or framing your world so that you can have the processes in operation in your world. Are you hearing me? Hello, James. How are you? I miss you. Hallelujah. I'm so excited because I keep saying to myself, can I continue with this? I'm just going to leave it where it is. Because I know how exciting it is to create a brand new world. If you're NASA, you can create a, a new way of doing things. If you're, if you're an engineer, if you're a doctor, a lawyer, an educational person, uh, an educator, you can create a brand new world. A doctor, you can create a brand new world. Set different systems, set the protocol in place, set the processes in place, set the protocol, and then step up to it. And your world is created. Don't forget, in October, we'll be having an amazing, amazing, powerful business conference where I'll teach you how to create systems from scratch. You can't miss it. Check our website. you see it. I hope you, this is blessing you today. We are creating a brand new world. If you don't like the world you're living in, don't worry about it. Guess what will happen? Better worlds are going to be created by you. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So it's wonderful what God is doing today. Create a brand new world. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you this because for me, I'm thinking the, the Lord spoke to me to start doing the daily boost to help you. So that you can actually get into making our world a better place. Making our world a better place. We need to make our world a better place. Let's not be like some of those religious people that want to run and go to heaven. No, let's bring heaven down to people. That's what we call, we're talking about, creating a brand new world. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping every one of you now. So what we're going to do is, let's go back and recap. What you see is what you get. As far as your eyes can see. Genesis 13 verse 15. For the land which you see it, to thee I will give unto your seed forever. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 4, verse, let's go to verse 18. I want to show you something amazing there. The Bible says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. What you see around you, already exist is only temporary somebody one day is going to knock down that tall building so that you can build your brand new city you can bring, build a brand new world you can build your own quote unquote heaven not even Dubai your own heaven on earth you can do that others have done it the city you're living in somebody started it how did it start a man's dream a woman's dream, an ideology. Somebody had an idea. Let's make a beautiful world out here. No sickness, no disease. You come in here sick, you get healed and stay healed. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about how to set the protocol, framing your world. I hope this is helping you. Everything you see around you is 
temporal. But the things that you see in the spirit is eternal. Bring them here and create a brand new world. And it says in the chapter before that, the last verse again says, But we all, with open face, beholding in a glass, in a mirror, the glory of God, of the Lord, I change to the same image. In other words, to make this effective, you want to come to a face-to-face -face with Him. You're changed to what you see. I want to look into His eyes and see what He sees. I want to see what He sees about me. So that when I see that, I can produce that in my world. Are you catching on to what I'm talking about today? Create your own world. Hallelujah. This is what I'm talking about. We have a, a, a time when you know, some people are just thinking, I want to see Jesus. No, I want to be changed to becoming what I see. It's not about seeing Jesus. It's about transformation. When you see him, let's go to the next logical step. I've seen Jesus fine. I see Jesus quite a number of times. I've seen him. But every time I see him, this is where I get my revelation from. He just downloads to me. He said, go and show them what I've just shown you. A lot of the things I'm talking about comes from my moment of face-to-face -face encounter. I see it from his perspective, not from the world's perspective. That's the purpose of why I have encounters with him. Why I see him face-to-face. -face. I am chained to what I see and I come and share it with you so that we can create a brand new world according to his plan. Are you catching on to this? What you say you shall have what you say. By faith, we believe that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And so today, I want to wrap this up and I want to tell you how amazing you are. How amazing God thinks you are. And how much God has invested in you today. See, I love you from my family to yours. I want to say you are family. And we believe the best about you. And please don't forget, I want to encourage you that great things are in store for you. The world is so big. Can I tell you one secret? The power of God that God has used from creation till today cannot be compared to the power of God God has never used. He has more power. I mean, all the power he has used is less than the nail out of his fingers to create the galaxies and the universes. It's not as much as a nail in his finger. The rest of them is available to you. Do you know that God does not need his power? You do. And do you know that God has made that available to you by his spirit? We'll talk about that tomorrow. Until tomorrow, I look forward to seeing you. Check my website, christlove.org. And also, I want you to go and donate, make, make some donation. If this has been a blessing to you, sow a seed to it. I know you folks have a generous spirit. Just sow a seed and say, okay, man of God, I want to do something. I believe in what you're doing. I'm receiving some spiritual nourishment. Let me invest in what you're doing. You go to uh, uh, my, my uh, website, christlove.org, and click the donate button. Become a partner with us. Consider that. And uh, you will be blessed. I hope this is helping you. You know, sometimes I think about the daily boost. I think, boy, I have so much to do every day. I have to prepare to come and talk to you every day. I try to be consistent. At least I come to you. I know I apologize sometimes I come a little late because sometimes just a few technical things because we are moving from different buildings, from different locations. So sometimes some things are left over because we are busy doing a lot of things in the background. But I want to tell you I love you so much and you are the reason why I do it because I know you believe the word of God. And because you believe it, greater things are going to keep happening to you. Great things will happen to you. Great things will happen. I can't say enough of that. Great things. God wants to do a great thing in you, a good thing, a new thing. And it's going to take you to where you've never been. Show you what you've never seen. And be your partner with you to do what you've never done. Believe that today. I have faith in what God has spoken concerning you. Let's become partners and make the world a better place. I love you guys. Hey, I, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to have hopefully Q&A. And we'll keep this within an hour. I want to make sure you guys can get some good stuff. I thank you all for joining me. Share this with other people. Click on it. I love the fact that I can see all the hearts. I can see all the thumbs up. That's wonderful. Keep it engaged. Share it with as many people as possible. And I tell you, I want great things to happen to you today. Go on and take on the day. Let Jesus be expressed through you in your smile, in your speech, in your touch, in your, in your voice. Let him be magnified through you. Let, them, let your world be excited that you came. Okay? Go and do it. 
Write to me. Let me know how we've been a blessing to you. I look forward to hearing from you very soon. I love you from my heart to yours. I'll talk to you again. God bless you. Thank you.